It's Clark, Clark and Perry on the case. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry do what it takes. Ja, na, na, na. Clark and Perry investigate. The activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, Alberta. Available on Telus, Optic TV, On Demand, Bidflex, YouTube, and more for limited time only. Terms and conditions apply. Ja, na, na, na. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be very fun. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Windy City's finest. I'm Clark. He's Perry, and we are joined once again by Gary Uchikura as well. So why don't you break us down what we're going to be doing? Because I'm not going to be able to describe what we just did. Right okay, there. so um, <laughs> before you start throwing clay on a wheel, you want to mix it up. And that process for most potters is called wedging. It's a hand, wedge, hand process where you mix the clay up. You could, there's various techniques involved. You could spiral wedge it. You could do what's called the ram's head when you wedge it. Um, I kind of invented this technique where... Uh, it actually incorporates a bit of sword making technique where okay. they're folding the steel over and over and over and that multiplies the number of layers that you've got within the clay. It rapidly mixes the clay. Real. If okay. you do this, uh, what I call slam wedging, um, you pull it out into a strip. So you slam it against the, Just the like canvas. It. Okay. I had a little bit of time to practice before. <laughs> <laughs> And you get this nice long strip. Wow, happening. look at that size as well, too. Right, and then you start rolling it up. And once you roll it up, you get these. Let's get a nice view of that. Multiple layers going on. So once you got a handle on it, you can start wedging it as you roll it together again. And this is a really fast way of getting the clay uh, homogenized. So there's no hard, hard spots or bubbles or that sort of thing. Uh, when you finish it, when you roll it up, there's always a chance, a risk that you're going to introduce some air into the clay body. So it's always a good idea to just to squish her down. Continue wedging it like a normal wedging process like this. This is called the, the ram's head, for instance. The ram's head? The ram's head. The reason why it's called the ram's head is because after you do this for a little bit, you get this circular thing happening oh, where it looks yeah. kind of like a ram's head. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, I see yeah. what you're saying. So this is the ram's head wedging technique. Yeah, look at my ram. <laughs> <laughs> it's wide eyes and a little bit, a little petite nose as well too. And uh, yeah, I like to kind of uh, form it into a bit of a cylinder before I put it on the wheel. I like to smooth out any any of these creases. See mm -hmm. these creases that form on there? You want to smooth those out if you can. I like to do this, where I'm turning it and smoothing. That's going to be good creases. for practicing, uh, for spinning this on the wheel, I'm sure. Right. right. So when you stick it to the wheel, um, from time to time, if you have a little bit of a mess up when you adhere it to the wheel, it can form uh, pockets of air. Okay. And to minimize that, you try to get rid of those little wrinkles. And uh, oh, it's not working that great right now. It's good to have a slightly dampened uh, surface. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's to work okay. On. And, Let me uh, help you out with that as well, too. We got plenty of water over in this side. Seal those cracks there. And finding the perfect moisture content for the clay is very difficult uh, from time to time. Uh, clay, when it's brand new, can often be a little too wet for optimal throwing. So you have to sit there and dry it down. Okay. Or if you wedge it for uh, a number of minutes, that can actually dry it down uh, quite a bit, significantly. Um, but once you've got the cylinder, it's basically sort of like dress rehearsal for throwing it on the wheel. The r nicer and rounder it is, the easier it is to uh, Affix to the wheel and center it. Okay, and, so and you've been doing started. this for time and time again. How do you know when is the perfect moisture content? Um, yeah, this is, it's a matter of the uh, of experience, instinct, I guess, okay. to some degree. That makes sense. You could tell when if it's tacky, if like if your hand is sticking to it visibly when you when you hold it, it's too wet. Right now, it's just it's perfect for throwing a small oh. amount of clay. I think. Excellent. You prepared yeah. just perfectly for us. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> So if we want, if we can, shall we move over to the yeah, wheel absolutely. and well, I'll get started? I actually want to kind of talk about a little bit of the preparations okay, sure. that you did uh, before this as well too. Right. So what type of board is this for? So this is a canvas uh, uh, 
we call it a, a geez, what should I call it? A, a throwing board or just a wear board kind of thing that's yeah. been uh, covered with a canvas material that allows you to wedge on the surface without uh, material sticking or the the clay sticking. Oh, too, too I much see. So it. anti anti stick for yeah. the clay. Yeah, okay. and you like the it's good to dampen the the surface a little bit because it could be infused with a fair bit of clay. And as uh -huh. you, especially if you're slam wedging, it can raise some dust. And silica dust is not good for your lungs. Not at all. Over a long period of time, will be aware. Yeah. you will develop cancer if you're inhaling too much of this stuff. So good, yeah. good to know. Okay, yes. <laughs> well, this is a very, well, a very uh, mysterious and dangerous profession that you've just added. <laughs> so we've had a chance to kind of interview you and show off a lot of other things. I have a big question for you. I see this. Yes. Are you an assassin, Gary? <laughs> so this is this is a clay wire. It's used to uh, cut the uh, the clay into the size of uh, pieces that you want to work with. Um, I I oftentimes work with sizes about this big, but many time many time I'll I'll use material about you know four or five times this amount okay. and, and raise a fairly considerably larger uh, vessel. Uh, and when you do that, it has to be even drier than this. Uh, because if it's too wet, if it's even at this moisture, it will probably end up sagging on itself. You won't be able to pull up the structure. You won't even, okay. It has yeah. to be drier. So okay. it, you have to be really pushing the, the, um, the limit of dryness, I guess, in the material. Okay. We're going to gloss over the fact that okay. you didn't deny that you're not an assassin, just, <laughs> by the way. But let's, what, what's next for this? <laughs> okay, so let's go, <laughs> let's, let's go over to the wheel and okay. uh, we can get, uh, get started with uh, demonstrating. Okay, well, throwing. I'm, I'm going to get into my nice okay. audience participation seats oh, as well, we too. need some water here. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. Brought the tools. Yeah. So some people will sponge the wheel head down. They'll sponge it down, but I find just using a sponge leaves the surface a little too slick and wet, okay. which is not what you want. Um, you want the you want the wheel head to be damp, but not like really, really, really wet. You don't want to see any droplets of water. That's yeah, what yeah. Right now. And then that way you can get the clay to affix to the wheel head mm -hmm. a little faster. And when I start, I start with something I call pat centering. Okay. A lot of potters do this, just the preliminary centering where you visually assess it, try to get it as close to center as possible. You use the rings that are on the wheel head, for instance, as a basic guide. Gary, how long have you done this? So this is about year five since year I five. started. I took my first uh, course about five years ago at university as a summer, yeah. summer course. Uh, with the instructor Tanya Duty, yeah, and uh, she she introduced me to the wheel. Now, now we did a lot of other things like the hand building and that sort of thing. But I, every chance I could get, I was always going right back to the wheel. What, what kept you coming thing. back? Um, I, I don't know. I think it's it's kind of like uh, uh, falling in love with somebody. Almost, yeah, right? you, you know, almost the second that you sort of lock eyes that that they're the person for you, right? <laughs> and uh, with me and Clay, this, I, I just had this instant realization, you know, the eureka moment as soon yeah. as I did this, that this is what was meant to be, right? That's amazing. So, yeah, so the first order of business is affixing it to the wheel. So the primary pressure is just downwards, trying to get it to fix properly. Then once it fixes, you do something called coning. You cone it up, and once it's up in a, in a nice tall structure, you push it back down again. And you do this process several times. It's like a secondary mixing process. Right. Uh, it helps center it. And uh, if you've got air bubbles, it helps to... To um, kind of just push them right out. Disperse the air, air bubbles out as well, yeah. And you could almost hear it, like some of the air bubbles. Yeah, popping. yeah, you can kind of hear yeah. just faintly some popping noises as well too, as so, you're kind of squishing. Yeah, the coning process, it, it all depends on how well wedged the clay was to begin with. Yeah, yeah. If it's really well wedged, you don't have to do very much usually. But I like, usually two or three times I'll, I'll cone up and down. And more if, it's, uh, if it continues to show. You could feel little cracks and bubbles mm -hmm, if there mm -hmm. is any. 
And, uh, and, and the movements that you're using with your hands, they're very, are, are they, like, would you describe them as smooth against the clay? Oh, absolutely. Nothing that's being too sharp or anything. You're not yeah. digging in with a finger or something. No, okay. no. Uh, it feels like butter. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. It feel, to me, it's really creamy. Uh, polarized porcelain is special that way. It's, uh, it's sort of a, a joy to throw because it is so smooth material. It's really, it's really coming across like that as yeah. well. Yeah. So once you've got Great this sort shape. of bun, bun on the wheel, you might want to flatten the top just slightly, and then find center. And once you found center, start pushing downward. And the idea is not to just jab a finger down the center, but almost to make a a V. A V. A okay. V like a like this. Yep. Into into the center, just so that it's easier to get your hand down to the bottom as you get deeper. I, I, you're yeah. using this, uh, is it a sponge that you're yes. using off of the so, side? So this is, is a this throwing one? sponge. It's okay. a thin material and it holds some water and it allows you to uh, sustain a, a contact with the surface of the clay without getting too much friction, oh, and letting it dry out. If it dries out, then you're not gonna be able to throw anymore. Yeah. So here I'm pulling up what they call pulling on the vessel. Uh, I'm raising the walls of the vessel that I'm making. So. And the excess, you're kind of just tossing to the side. It's yeah. Not sticking to your yeah. hands. Okay. Um, you can use it efficiently too. But right now I'm focusing on slowing the wheel down. If, if you sense fric like a little too much friction, you slow the wheel down to adjust for it. But uh, yeah, most of your force, the, the most force that you apply is at the first bottom inch and a half or two mm -hmm. inches or so of mm -hmm. material. That bottom is where it's usually the thickest. You got to constantly reapply a little bit of moisture to make sure it's nice and slick. Yeah. To your both, both your hands and to the surfaces of the, the vessel inside and outside. And uh, I like to leave a little bit of clay on the outside. There's some potters out there that will take every last scrap of clay and push it into the vessel, which is really efficient. But uh, I like I like to leave a little bit on the bottom that sort of smoothly goes to the out outward, just to give it a bit of a scaffolding, like a, mm -hmm. a stronger adherence to the wheel. Yeah, absolutely. It gives it a very strong base, and you're, yes. and you're really able to work around that. You don't yeah. have it for me. It's one less thing I'd have to worry about when <laughs> <laughs> when something's spinning around so fast. And I'm, I'm trying to mold it for my mother or something yeah. like that. So the number one rookie mistake is the wheel spinning too quickly. I can't wait to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to adjust the wheel speed as you okay. go and your hand pressure as you go so that it doesn't, you don't push in too much and make it too thin. And when it comes to wheel speed, yeah. what is like, it really, I guess, depends on what you're doing as per the speed. Yes. What What would typically be the fastest you would like? What would be an example of a like, uh, when full blast? The, when when you're centering, when yeah. you're centering full okay. blast, when you're fixing it to the wheel, yep. almost full blast. Okay. Um, but then, as soon as you're past the bottom couple inches, you want to start slowing down because mm -hmm. as you get taller and taller, there's more torque. There's more distance of clay that you the torque will work through, and so the chance of something warping on you goes higher. Ah. So you actually, that's why I say like, eighty percent of your force is at the bottom, and then you have to slowly decrease the force until it's maybe ten percent at the top. Yeah, because it's very gradual. You yeah. don't just leave it in one place. Exactly. Anything that you do, starting from the bottom, has to lead its way to the top. Right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, you try to get the bottom nice and flat. You compress it so that it won't um, crack on you mm -hmm. while it's drying. So I know you're super focused right now. So mm -hmm. I got another question for you. Okay. Um, what what exactly are you envisioning you're creating right now? Okay. So I I always start with a cylinder. Yeah. For the most part, if it's uh, going to be a bowl, if it's going to be a cup or a vase. The cylinder is your starting point. Mm -hmm. uh, if mm -hmm. you're going to do something like a plate, that's a slightly different uh, project. Yeah. And I would probably start with a bat on the wheel. A bat is just another sort of like a, a removable surface. Okay. That you you don't have like if it's a plate because it's so wide. If you wired it off and tried to lift the plate off after you just pressed it through it, it would flop all oh, over the place. Oh yeah. So it you need you need a bat on okay. the surface, and that's what 
these holes are for. These uh, they're called bat bat pin holes. Oh, okay, okay. And you yeah, and you put these pegs through here, and then you could fix this bat down onto the surface of the wheel, yes. and uh, you can continue to make something like a plate that's nice and wide, and not have to worry about pulling it off the the, um, the bat. What's been what's been the most difficult project you've created? Um, the difficult projects are the ones that are bigger usually, right? Yeah, so yeah. if they're really large, I have done several large, uh, large vases or pots and, um, yeah, the larger you get, the more difficult it gets. It's a lot of clay to control, right? It's just yeah. simply a huge, a bigger time investment too. Yeah. Right? Oftentimes, uh, there's several ways to do it. You could do it using a coil method. Okay. Um, or you could use it, uh, use a, a two-part or three-part multiple stage method where mm -hmm. you ha each each part is done on a bat, a separate bat, and then before you, you don't cut it off at first, you you take you form one that goes up about yay high, mm -hmm. you take it off the wheel, you bring another bat in, form another one about that high, to the same circumference as the other other one, and then you flip it upside down, attach that, cut it off. And then you continue making a pot. Like you oh can make goodness. very large pots doing that. You are literally taking it project by project. Yes. Yeah, that makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah. You only have such so big of a wheel. It's it it like also has to dry down yeah. to a certain uh, hardness in order for it to support that extra weight. Right? Wow. So if you're going that large, usually you need to um, you need to uh, give it time to dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm here just compressing the bottom again. The bottom is also usually a little problematic because as you're for pulling up on the sides, you get all sorts of ripples and bumps happening on the on the base. Well, yeah, for those of us who are watching as well too, I've, I've definitely witnessed, like you can see it as they kind of develop as you raise your hand. You're, you're really great at smoothing these out, mm -hmm. but I can definitely tell I won't be. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess Amazing. the key is just patience mm -hmm. and knowing what's the critical thickness that you should work with. I, I, mm -hmm. I would say like roughly quarter inch at the top, but at the base right now, I would say it's probably about eight or nine millimeters. Actually, it's it's, it's fairly thick. Yeah, I would have said the same. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. and that's actually a good good thickness ratio to have when you're building the thing, because if it gets too thin at the bottom, that's when the whole vessel will collapse. You can always adjust the thickness that when you're doing what's called trimming. So after okay. it's gone to the leather hard stage, you can trim off the excess. And then yeah, you could adhere it to the wheel. It gets harder if you're working with asymmetrical vessels, which I frequently do. Mm -hmm. Asymmetrical vessels means you can't trim it afterwards because it's all bumpy and everything. You can't Once, spin it on the wheel and then just trim it. Yeah. Like Once you're done, you're, you're done. done. You're done. You're done. Yeah. So. So that that kind of brings me into the question as well mm -hmm. too. So what what brings you to that asymmetry in, when it comes to your ceramic art? So. Um, are you familiar with what, something called wabi sabi? Wabi sabi is nope. the, is um, is the aesthetic of imperfection oh. and naturalness. Uh, maybe you could introduce the idea of ca uh, chaos into it as yeah. well. Um, it's a slightly Buddhist concept as well. This wabi sabi idea, mm -hmm. the idea that everything is imperfect, and then we we actually find things that are most beautiful to be is the things that are asymmetrical. Yeah, they're not perfect. If it's perfectly symmetrical, it's almost too Artif perfect. It's artificial. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it looks artificial. It's yeah. unnatural, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, you only have to look to nature to sort of find the sense. Like perfect wabi sabi is mm -hmm. just nature. Mm -hmm. Look at a tree. Look at a blade of grass. And nothing is completely symmetrical, right? There's always an yeah. unevenness to it. And uh, I think I I make these um, asymmetrical vessels just because. I, I think they're more interesting than mm -hmm. a perfectly symmetrical vessel, for the most part. Yeah. And if it's not this asymmetry I produce with the uh, with the form itself, um, it, I look about look at the texture. Uh, uh, you can. It's easy to make a really smooth vessel, mm -hmm. but I like introducing like this this really rough throwing line into the vessel as well. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it could be a number of things. It, it's not yeah. just the texture. It's not just the form. It could be uh, any specific you know thing or all of them all, all yeah. at once. And you have a very specific signature as well too when it comes to yes. finishing your art piece yes. too. Uh, yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So I I um, I like to put my handprint into it, and I I sort of I call it the the embrace at the end of the, the pot making. Mm. Um, so I'll make a, a really satisfyingly symmetrical piece, but I know that it's missing that it is. special touch. This is the thing that makes it essentially mine. Yeah. Um, you know, my hands are, are, are unique in that way. That I've yeah. got fingerprints and identical transfer. Mm -hmm. um, but not just that, even though they're my signature, I guess, everybody, well, most people have hands that, and they can relate to this idea mm -hmm. of holding or touching the vessel again. And I like to, to think of it as uh, that um, last communication mm -hmm. between my making it and the person who's going to use it. Mm -hmm. so, uh, anyways, here, here I go. I'm going to make a vase out of this, a bud vase of sorts. I'm excited. So, I will do one last little pull here. I mean, you don't want to. I'm actually throwing it opposite the way you're supposed to. Your fingers shouldn't be pointing into the direction of the clay moving in. But <laughs> if you're gentle with it, you can get away with it. Are there happy accidents when it comes to... Uh... Oh, yeah. All the time. All the time. <laughs> all the time. But um, yeah, as soon as you feel that accident happening, uh, there are ways to sort of mitigate so it doesn't get much worse. Mm -hmm. And actually, you can incorporate that into, into something that you are still controlling aesthetically. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I'm curious to know as well too, so like these vessels can be pretty tall mm -hmm. and you, you have to reach in quite a lot mm -hmm. just to kind of control uh, that upward motion. Yeah. What, what would you consider to be too tall of a vessel to go with? Uh, <laughs> I mean, that all depends if how much material you're working with and That's how, right. how wet it is. Yeah. If it's, uh, again, like if it's really wet, you're going to be limited in mm -hmm. how far you can pull it up before like simple um, physics determines mm -hmm. that uh, it's too soft to yeah. support itself anymore. So I do, I, I like to close the top in slightly before I, I get to constricting wow. the vessel. It's a little bit thick on the bottom sometimes. It's always all right to have a little bit extra on the bottom. The worst is to have not enough. <laughs> <laughs> and finding that out a little too late. Yeah, you can, can always trim, trim off the excess, but you can't, it's hard to add on yeah. right afterwards. I, I find this motion that you're doing actually quite amazing because like what I'm seeing mm -hmm. is that the, the top is very uneven at first. It's mm -hmm. not a circle at all, yeah. but then it ends up like that way. Yeah. How is that happening? <laughs> the key is just simply moving your hands over slowly. Mm -hmm. And when you let go, because it's asymmetrical as you're compressing it, yeah. if, as long as you let go of it slowly within the span of about at least one full rep revolution, mm -hmm. um, by the time you let go, it's back to symmetrical again. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, porcelain especially has a bit of a form memory. It's, it's a bit rubbery. Right. So it likes going back to the form. And this is what we're using, was. right? Porcelain? This is porcelain. This is polarized okay. porcelain. So yeah. um, the most expensive clay. <laughs> and some people like choose to stay away from it w for a good reason because it's so expensive. You know, you, you can't afford to be making a mess out of you know 100 bucks of clay. I appreciate time. your trust in this <laughs> right now. <laughs> That's what well, I was going the, to the say. The beauty is it can be recycled too. Right? Oh good. So yeah, it's not it's not a one-shot deal only. Like if yeah. it doesn't work, you just sort of knead it up again and then mm -hmm. you can work it again after it's dried out a slightly slightly. Yeah. So I can see this being quite a messy process. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you owned this apron? <laughs> this uh, this particular apron I've had for a couple of years now. A yeah. couple of years? A couple of years, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So that's like two aprons probably in the span of five years? Uh, something like that, yeah. Okay. I was just wondering what the comparison was. I was told I needed to bring an apron, and I just brought the one I had in my kitchen. <laughs> I mean, that works, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, good. <laughs> good. But, but I, 
I, I do have to ask, what would be the difference between these two? Is there any special advantage? Well, actually, or is it just I, soak? <laughs> I customized this, this apron a little bit so that it would fit around uh, pants sleeves and then I could fix it there. I've got some straps. Just a second. That's what that makes so much sense. Yeah, like when I started, it was just the, the flaps there without the straps. Oh. But I, I sewed some straps on to the side here so I could tie it down. And then that keeps my pants covered a little, a little bit better. I think as a, it doesn't matter if you're a ceramicist or a woodworker or, or what have you. I think if you're interested in improving your performance, you're always thinking of ways to modify your equipment so that yeah. it works better. Right? Yeah, just so that you can customize it. Sure. Well, I'll be probably getting rid of these heart-shaped pockets the next <laughs> okay. time we do this. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, Perry doesn't want. <laughs> no, Perry likes the hearts. <laughs> the hearts. Okay. Just for you, Perry. <laughs> just for you. So as you choke it in, it actually starts to get all slightly thicker, so you end up having to to sort of pull again to, to thin it out slightly. That is amazing. And you don't want to prolong this process for too long because the whole time you're throwing with water on the outside, the clay is absorbing it. And mm -hmm. that means it's getting softer by the pull, basically. And after a time, it might start to wobble on you. If it, if you detect even the slightest wobble in the vessel, you should take your rib to it. This is a rib tool. And I think they okay. call it like a kidney bean or whatever rib. A kidney bean, yeah. a rib, and what is yeah. it? And I use this to basically clean off the excess slip on the outside oh. of the vessel, and this will really almost, smooths it out as well too and it almost immediately helps uh dry up the clay a little bit so that it stiffens it up and it's able to hold its own weight a little bit better and even still you're only going as fast as you need to that's right yeah, yeah. so controlling wheel speed is critical as wow. a beginner i remember going full blast yeah. all the time that <laughs> i would make up make so many Smart. mistakes <laughs> but yeah, at, at full speed, it's very difficult to maintain that yeah. lubrication with the water yeah. so that it never grabs. Like, if, if it feels like it's going to grab, I immediately stop or slow down the wheel, yeah. and then it's a lot easier. Because the true it. masters know when to take their time. <laughs> well, well, as soon as you feel the friction, if you do it a number of times, you'll, you'll understand that as soon as you feel friction, yeah. you're at risk of just pulling and warping the whole thing. Well, I feel again. like that's something that people would initially be scared of when yeah. first getting into into this, is mm -hmm. that they feel like, well, it's wet, I'm yeah. against the clock yeah. almost, right? So, is, is that ever the case? Um, to some degree, yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, I think, you know, it, it is a accumulation of little rules that you build mm -hmm. up to. Uh, it, it does feel like mad. Some, some people say, how do you do that? It's yeah. just... Well, it's, it's the number of basic ideas that build on one on top of the other. Right. And if you don't have the first one down, yeah. you won't be able to get to the second uh, stage of the That's applicable to, I feel, a lot of things. A lot of things are like that, it's, right? It's yes. just little layers. Yeah. Like and so what I'm going to do now is trim off a little bit of excess at the bottom because, you know, I, I made it thicker at the base. Right. And this is just the process where I trim off some of that excess. and. By doing so, you allow the vessel to dry a little more evenly. Well, yeah, I was about to say, yeah. after you had used, I'm going to call it the kidney bean still, yeah. um, it just, like, the, the shine of yeah. the damp, like, of mm -hmm. the dampness yeah. just disappeared. Right. Yeah, so uh, I, like, I like to undercut a little bit. So what I would say is um, giving it a little bit of lift, mm -hmm. aesthetic lift. When it's uh, undercut on the bottom, it doesn't feel quite as squat, I guess, uh, thick at the base. Squat, thick at the base. Okay. Uh, I, I kind of think about ballet dancing, uh, dancing yeah. in general. Yeah. Um, dancing is more graceful when you see them, you know, twirling on one foot, for right. instance. Or, so they have a very small base and, and all the movement is up here. Is up at, yeah. It feels like they're almost levitating, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like the aesthetic that I want to apply to the vessel. So the cross act wouldn't be a great example, like not any type of dance you'd watch, right? <laughs> <laughs> Very strong in the okay. base. 
I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that that's not aesthetic in its own right, but uh, with the vessel, these, these pots, I think it's nice to have because clay itself is such an inherently heavy material. Mm -hmm. It's nice to sort of impart this sense of uh, of uh, levitation, I guess. To yeah, yeah, yeah. And for the interior, because what I am noticing still is that it's it's looking very smooth, very uh, dry-ish, um, mm -hmm. mind you, on the outside. But on the inside, that sheen is still there. Like I'm still seeing yeah. that, that yeah. glistening. So does that get taken care of, uh, like with what you're doing, or is yeah. that more in the kiln? Um, no, no, it it uh, it will dry out naturally. It mm -hmm. like the moisture from the inside will sort of go outward as mm -hmm. as you set it down and let it dry for over a number of days. Right. And uh, so we're almost finished, I guess. But I like to finish the, the lip. I also like to uh, make sure that the inside of the top spout, for instance, what you can see anyways, the texture is smooth. So I will do a sort of rethrow to introduce what I call uh, a throwing line. It's called the throwing line there. Just a visual trace of, actually that's, that's kind of messy. The visual trace of your fingers and hands throwing the vessel. Mm. And then I use what they call a chamois. It's just a, a small piece of leather mm -hmm. to smooth off the laying of the pot. I would normally finish finish off a little bit smoother and then add, re-add that throwing line. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to right now. And I'm oh, gonna trim. I'm gonna end up trimming this too at some point. I, I honestly have to say this is amazing to watch as well too. <laughs> to happen in real time right in front of you because yeah. like I I mean. I've always seen it in movies. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it in real life before. So it's it's really cool. I, I also so I'm gonna add the the fingerprints. Um, normally I would hit it with the hair dryer. In fact, I'll do that right now. Okay. It's still probably right a little on the tacky side. Notice that it's still a bit uh, also a little too thick at the base for my and, ju and just to remind presence. myself and maybe some viewers as well too. So the hair dryer, what were you per like? What was that for? Decreasing how tacky the surface is because gotcha. it's still Dry relatively enough. freshly th thrown. Gotcha. When I get my fingers into it to add the the fingerprint marks, the hand hand marks, I don't want my hand sticking to the vessel. Right, so. right, because. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is make a perfectly symmetrical piece <laughs> and then tack to it and then just yeah. rip it apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're like, get your hands in yeah. there. <laughs> I don't have a pencil. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Thanks for highlighting that. <laughs> okay. All right. And now ready to add the finger marks like to shut the wheel off this this is amazing so so for any viewers who are ocd look away <laughs> look away this is trigger warning for ocd <laughs> <laughs> so make sure your hands are nice clean and, and fairly dry and uh, i like to like think about how i would hold it also when i'm glazing it as a consideration as well how mm -hmm. what kind of hand position is easiest to hold when i'm glazing it mm -hmm. Add my hands. I don't want it to be symmet symmetrical. I don't match no. up my thumbs or fingers. Because um, that would defeat the purpose. That would defeat the purpose of the asymmetry you want to introduce. Right? Oh, so, and then slowly press that into it. Still tacky, but it's okay. It's a little too tacky. So, yeah, there we go. And then the last stage is uh, wiring it off, they call it. A lot of potters will pull it in from the far side in. I like to push it out. It just makes more sense intuitively because it's easier to keep the wire on the wheel head by right. pushing downward. Yeah. Rather yeah, than yeah. when you pull it, you tend to pull it upward. Yeah. Okay. That so, just kind yeah. of making sure that you don't fall victim to your natural. Just yeah. Instincts. Just positionally. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, once you get a lot of experience, you can keep it right. on the wheel head easily enough. But hmm. for me, it's just intuitively easier to push outward. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. And then once we get this off, I'm going to put it on that wear board over there. 
not a wear board, sorry, wedging board. So oh. Oh, oh, oh. I like to you like to pick it up from the bottom. And I'm probably going to trim the bottom up a bit afterwards as well. So. I don't know. Did you want to go directly into, into making your own or? Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm yeah. going <laughs> to basically make that, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, we I'm can a fast go for learner. It. We well, can go for it. you know, I, I, I've basically mastered everything okay. uh, that we've done so far right. on the Windy City's Finest. Okay, for those so folks that don't let's believe start with me, this. I will get uh, it you're going to have to watch the other episodes to prove me wrong. So <laughs> please tune in. It's Clark and Perry on the case. Ja -na -na -na. Clark and Perry, do what it takes. Ja -na -na -na. Clark and Perry, investigate. The activities and interests of local artists in the Windy City's Finest throughout both Lethbridge and Medicine Hat, Alberta. Available on Telus, Optic TV, On Demand, Vidflex, YouTube, and more for limited time only. Terms and conditions apply. Yeah, 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 yeah.